descriptions in English, please. So this is the first video of chapter eight. Chapter eight is on chemical composition. And so this uh, first video will introduce you to the mole and uh, counting by weighing. So what do coefficients in a chemical reaction mean? For example, when you have 2H2 gas plus 1O2 gas gives 2H2O gas. What does it mean? It means that two molecules of hydrogen gas react with one molecule of oxygen gas to produce two molecules of water vapor. But imagining a, a reaction happening on, between just two molecules, you know, three molecules is not realistic. Uh, there is many, many molecules in a sample. But it's impossible to count out atoms or molecules. Uh, they are too small and too numerous to count individually. It's just, just impossible. So uh, when dealing with atoms and molecules, we must use their mass as a way to count them. So we must count them by weight. So let's go through an analogy to see what it means uh, counting by weighing. And we will uh, use uh, nails that are sold by the pound. Because many places sell objects by the pound. For example, an hardware store may sell nails by the pound instead of by the individual nail. And so let's say that you need 200 nails for a project. It would be a waste of time, of course, to count out the number of nails that you need. Instead, it is easier to weigh them. And of course, you would need to know uh, the average mass of a given number of uh, nails, right, to, to be able to do this. And so this problem is similar to asking how many atoms or ions are in a given mass of an element. If you know uh, the mass of a given number of atoms, then you can retrieve the number of uh, atoms from any kind of mass for that same element. So let's uh, use the example again and uh, finish that problem to see how we would solve it. So a customer wants 200 nails for a project. They determine that a dozen nails weighs 0.150 pounds. So this is uh, important information here. One dozen of nails has a mass of 0.150 pounds. So the nails are sold by the pound. So how many nails should the customer buy? So uh, we know the following information. We want 200 nails and 200 has a dot here. We know uh, the mass of a given number of nails and here it's a dozen. For a dozen nails, we have 0.150 pound. So, uh, and, and of course we know what a dozen means. A dozen of nails means 12 nails. So we can convert from the number of nails to the number of pounds we need to purchase. So given uh, the amount we want, so we want 200 nails. So starting from the number of nails, using the fact that uh, there is um, 12 nails in a dozen, you can convert the number of nails to a dozen. And then given that you know uh, the dozen of nails you have, you can retrieve the mass in pound because you know the mass of one dozen. So the calculation would look like this. You would start with the given amount of 200 nails, multiply by the first conversion factor that changes uh, the number of nails to uh, dozens of nails, then multiply by the next conversion factor that will change the dozens of nails to a uh, pound, you know, the pound, uh, the 0.150 pound uh, for a dozen of nails. And so calculating this, you get, 2.50, uh, 2.50 pound of nails. So by weighing 2.50 pounds of nails, you know you will get 200 nails. So that's how you would buy uh, or count by uh, weighing. Knowing the mass, you know the number of nails there. Uh, yeah, we see that uh, the units of nails can sell, the units of dozens of nails can sell. So, uh, you know, still uh, counting by weighing here. Um, 
So we previously learned that not all atoms of an element have the same mass, and we call those isotopes. So for a given element in the periodic table, you know that it's made of several isotopes most of the time. And isotopes have different masses. They are the same element, but they have different masses because they have different number of neutrons in their uh, nucleus. And so in calculations, we usually use the average mass of all an uh, element's atoms found in a sample. So when you find a sample of uh, element, typically uh, there is the same amount of uh, one kind of isotope versus another. So when uh, you're calculating this average, you must take into account the abundance of each isotope in the sample. So you must know uh, the abundance of each isotope in a given sample. And then you, we, you, you can calculate the uh, average mass and it's called the atomic mass. So the formula to calculate the average mass and, and the atomic mass of an element is by doing the sum here, the large sigma symbol means the sum of the fractional abundance of the first isotope multiplied by the mass of the first isotope, you know, plus the fractional abundance of isotope two multiplied by the mass of isotope two, plus fractional abundance of isotope three multiplied by the mass of the isotope three, so etc. And you do that as many times as you have isotopes in a sample. So if you have only two isotopes, for example, chlorine has two isotopes, only chlorine 35 and chlorine 37 that are, you know, stable and that you would find in the sample of chlorine. And chlorine 35 is more abundant. It's uh, at 75.77% more uh, abundant. And then uh, the chlorine 37 is only uh, abundant at 25. 24.23%. So you need this information to be able to calculate the atomic mass of chlorine. And so it's the average of these uh, two isotopes and, and it's weighted by the percent abundance. So it comes down to do, uh, take the percentage divided by 100. So 0.7577. That's, you know, 75.77 divided by 100. So it's the fractional abundance of isotope one multiplied by the mass of the isotope one. So of course you need to have this information also of the mass of the isotope one, which is 34.969 atomic mass unit. Plus uh, the fractional abundance of isotope two. So it's 24.23% divided by a hundred. So 0 0.2423 multiply by the uh, mass of the isotope 2, chlorine 37, and that's 36.966 atomic mass unit. You do those two uh, multiplications and add uh, the two uh, answers, and you get uh, an average mass or an atomic mass for chlorine of 35.45 atomic mass unit. And that's the number you see in the periodic table for chlorine. Uh, you see the uh, the symbol there in the upper right corner, um, that's typical of what you would see in a ta ta periodic table. So that 35.45 is actually the average mass for the two isotopes of chlorine that are usually found in any kind of chlorine sample. So what are atomic mass units? Uh, that's a unit uh, with symbol AMU, and it's defined as one twelfth of the mass of a carbon-12 atom. So carbon-12 here is the isotope carbon-12. If you take uh, a twelfth of its mass of that carbon atom, it's the unit of one atomic mass unit. And that's uh, 1.6605, 10 to the negative 24 grams. It's a very, very, very small mass, of course, because it's one twelfth of the mass of an, uh, an isotope of uh, carbon-12. So uh, it's not even the mass of a, a full carbon atom, it's just uh, one twelfth. So that's what is an atomic mass unit. 
And so the atomic mass uh, is found on the periodic table. So all the atoms uh, in, or elements in the periodic table uh, are given uh, their uh, average atomic mass. It's usually the number between, uh, below the symbol or below the name, and it's a number with decimal, typically two or three decimals. And I will expect you to always keep two decimals because the periodic table I provide has two decimals. So for example, if you find copper in your periodic table, uh, you will find that one copper atom has an atomic mass of 63.55 atomic mass unit. So knowing this information, you can do some calculations. For example, you can calculate the mass in atomic mass unit of 1.04, 10 to the 22nd lithium atoms. So you have this number of lithium atoms. It's a large, huge number. And you want to know the mass. So because you have a number of atoms, uh, what you can do is uh, take the number of lithium atoms and multiply by the mass uh, in atomic mass unit per atom of lithium. So basically you use the atomic mass from the periodic table of 6.94 atomic mass unit per atom of lithium. And you use that as a conversion factor. So here, because we have a given amount of uh, at number of atoms, we want the one atom of lithium on the bottom of the conversion factor and the 6.94 atomic mass unit on top. We see that the uh, number of atoms of lithium cancels and we are left with uh, AMU, atomic mass unit. So you do the number of atoms times 6.94 and that's 7.22 10 to the 22nd uh, atomic mass unit. That would be the mass of this uh, amount of lithium atoms. Same way you can uh, calculate the number of lithium atoms if you know uh, a mass in atomic mass unit. And so the example here gives 15 atomic mass unit. So how many lithium atoms there is in that mass? So this time we start with the mass in atomic mass unit. So you will use the atomic mass unit of lithium, uh, uh, you know, you will write the conversion factor uh, opposite of what you had earlier. Because we start with 15 atomic mass unit of uh, lithium. So that's the given amount and we multiply. And this time we will have the one lithium atom on top and the 6.94 atomic mass unit per lithium uh, on the bottom. This way the atomic mass unit cancel. And if you do 15 divided by 6.94, that's 2.1613, that's the calculator answer. But, uh, you know, you, you cannot have a partial atom. So what is the mass of 15 atomic mass unit? It would be uh, two lithium atoms. Because basically one lithium atom is about seven atomic mass unit times two, it's 14 atomic mass unit. So, when you have about 15 atomic mass unit, that would be two lithium atoms. So you can see how we can use the atomic mass unit as a conversion factor to calculate a number of atoms or obtain a, a mass in atomic mass unit. So um, if you remember our analogy with nails, we use the dozen as a conven convenient number in our conversions. And uh, unfortunately, we cannot use a dozen for atoms. A, a dozen is way too small to use with atoms. We need a larger number because atoms are so, so small that they are not even uh, visible to the naked eye. And so you need so many of them to start to see something of your sample. And so the chemist dozen is called the mole, M-O-L-E. And the number is that one mole is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd uh, number of objects. So one mole is this number, just like one dozen is 12. Here, one mole is 6.022 10 to the 23rd object. And objects could, you know, could be uh, atoms, molecules, ions, formula units. Um, but it can be any kind of object to speak, uh, cars people, uh, fingers, whatever, um, that you can count. 
And so this number is called the Avogadro's number. It's named after Amadeo Avogadro, who was born in uh, 1776 and died in uh, 1856. So uh, what what is, you know, this small, it's such a large number. So visually, how can you uh, visualize it? So one mole of atoms or ions or molecules generally makes up objects that you can see. So that's the point here. We want to be able to see a sample of uh, the substance. And so, um, for example, 22 real copper pennies contain about one mole of copper. So you know that pennies are made of copper. If you collect 22 uh, copper pennies, uh, you so you can hold this in your hand, and that will be representing one mole of copper atoms because the pennies are made of copper atoms only. So 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of copper in, in this uh, number of uh, copper pennies. Uh, two large helium balloons would contain also approximately one mole of helium uh, atoms. So fill up two large helium balloons and you have one mole of helium atoms in, in those two uh, combined uh, balloons. Uh, one tablespoon of water contains approximately one mole of water. So one tablespoon, you know, a mass full of water would be one mole of water. So one mole of water means 0 0.6, 0 point, sorry, 6.022, 10 to the 23rd molecules of water. So the numerical value of the mole is defined as being equal to the number of atoms in exactly 12 grams of pure carbon 12. So it's a scientifically a very specifically defined number and it's equal to the number of atoms found in a sample of 12 grams exactly of a carbon 12 isotope, pure carbon 12 isotope. So if you can have a sample of 12 grams of pure carbon-12 isotope. And uh, then uh, machines have been able to uh, count those uh, atoms. And we have come up with the Avogadro number. And so this definition of the mole establishes a relationship between the mass, you know, the grams of carbon, 12 grams exactly, and the number of atoms, the Avogadro number. And so techniques for counting atoms very precisely have been used to determine that. The fact that in uh, one mole, so by definition, one mole is 6.022 to 10 to the 23rd atoms. And that's the number of atoms you have, you know, atoms of carbon 12 you have in 12 grams of pure carbon 12 uh, uh, isotope. So because this is an equality, you know that any kind of equality can be used as a conversion factor. So the mole will be used as a conversion factor to uh, change number of uh, moles to uh, number of atoms or from a number of atoms changed into a number of moles. And so from this equality, there are two conversion factors that are possible. Uh, the one mole over the Avogadro number of atom or the number of uh, the number of atoms, you know, the Avogadro number of atoms over one mole. So let's practice that, converting moles to number of atoms. Because that's the reason why we have this uh, Avogadro number. Let's say we have 4.5 moles of neon and we want to know how many uh, neon atoms are contained in that sample of 4.5 moles of neon. So we know that we have 4.5 moles of neon. We want to find the number of neon atoms in that number of moles of neon. So the relationship is that definition of the mole. It's the fact that one mole of neon will contain 6.022 to 10 to the 23rd atoms of neon. And so uh, here, because we start with moles of neon, uh, we will convert two atoms of neon. And so the uh, equality will be changed into this version of the conversion factor. 
with the Avogadro number of, on top, uh, Avogadro number of atoms on top, and then the mole on the bottom. So then you always start your calculations with the given amount, 4.5 moles of neon times. And so the 4.5 moles of neon, uh, remember how this is in the numerator, even though it looks like in the middle here, it's in the numerator. You could have a line under and then a one under in the denominator. Multiplied by the conversion factor of uh, the Avogadro number of atoms over a mole. In your calculator, you do uh, this uh, 4.5 times 6.022 10 to the 23rd. So here uh, it is essential that you know how to use your um, scientific calculator and how to enter scientific notation using the EE key. So in um, TI30X2S calculators, it's the second button and then the X minus one. Uh, button uh, because the EE key is the second function of that key. So the capital E, remember how it stands for times 10 to the power and you don't need any kind of times 10 to the power. It's already uh, symbolized by the capital E. And then you enter just the 23 for the exponent equal 2.7099, 10 to the 24th. Um, here we have two sig figs in the given amount. The Avogadro number has four. The one mole is an exact number. So we keep two sig figs and it's going to be rounded to 2.7, 10 to the 24th atoms of neon in 4.5 moles of neon. Let's go through another example. This time we have a number of gold atoms and we want to know uh, the number of moles of gold. So we know 1.5, 10 to the 25 atoms of gold. We want to find the number of moles of gold in that uh, number of uh, atoms. So the relationship will be again, uh, the fact that one mole is equal to 6.022 10 to the 23rd atoms. And you can uh, personalize by having a uh, gold here, AU is the symbol for gold. So um, the concept map or the roadmap is that you start with atoms of gold and you want to find moles of gold. So uh, because we start with atoms of gold, uh, we will want the no Avogadro number of atoms on the bottom of the conversion factor, and then the one mole of gold on top. So the full calculation will look like this. You take the given amount, and it's 1.5, 10 to the 25 atoms of gold, multiplied by the conversion factor with the one mole on top and the Avogadro number on the bottom, and that's the number of atoms. So we see that the um, units of atoms cancel. So that confirms this is properly set up. Uh, next, you do 1.5 second EE key 25, so times 10 to the 25. Uh, divided, you know, multiplied by one and then divided by 0. Point, sorry, 6.022, 10 to the 23rd. And that's uh, 24.908 is 66, etc. Because we have two sig figs in the given amount, we need to keep two sig figs uh, in the final amount. And that's going to be so 24.9 rounded uh, to two sig figs uh, because we have a 4.9. We need to run the four into a five, and that's going to be 25 moles of gold. So let's do concept checks now. We have two. How many atoms of copper car uh, sorry of carbon are contained in 0 0.50 0 0.500 moles of carbon so we have a number of moles of carbon we want to find the number of atoms in that sample of moles so we know 
0.500 moles of carbon, and we want to find atoms of carbon. The relationship is, uh, again, uh, the fact that one mole contains 6.022 10 to the 23rd atoms of carbon. Um, so uh, the given amount is 0.500 moles of carbon that we will multiply by so you use the equality and you place the mole on the bottom because you're starting with moles. So you want to cancel the units of moles. And then the Avogadro number on top, and that's the number of atoms of carbon. So in the calculator, you do 0.500 times 6.022, 10 to the 23rd. Don't forget to use the scientific notation equals 3.011 10 to the 23rd. Um, that's the calculator answer right there. Uh, we have three sig figs in the given amount because we have 0 0.500. Those two zeros are significant because they come after a decimal point and after a non-zero digit. So we keep the three. 0 0.01. What comes after the one is another one, so you keep the one, and it's zero point. Sorry, three point zero one ten to the twenty third atoms of carbon in 0 0.500 uh, moles of carbon. So that solves the first concept check. Uh, let's look at the second one. How many moles of copper is equal to five point forty seven ten to the twenty second atoms of copper? So we are given a number of atoms of copper. We want to find the moles of copper that uh, this represents. Again, the relationship is the fact that one mole of copper is 6.022 10 to the 23rd atoms of copper. So the, the definition of the mole relates the number of atoms to the mole. And so um, here we will start our calculation with the given amount of uh, 5.47 10 to the 22nd atoms of copper. And we will multiply by the conversion factor uh, written such that one mole of copper is on top and 6.022 10 to the 23rd atoms of copper are on the bottom. Because we see that this way we can cancel uh, units of atoms of copper. So in the calculator, you do 5.47, 10 to the 22, divided by 6.022, 10 to the 23rd. I want to emphasize that if you're not using the scientific notation and do, uh, you know, 5.47 times 10 to the 22nd, divided by 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, if you have not put parentheses around the 6.022 10 to the 23rd, the calculator will move the times 10 to the 23 to the numerator, and that will give you a wrong uh, exponent. It's going to add your 22 plus 23, and you will have maybe 45, 10 to the 45, or 10 to the 46 which would be wrong. You know, number of Mars have to be reasonable numbers, numbers that don't really need the scientific notation. So here uh, it's a 0 0.090833. That's the calculator answer. Um, and uh, we um, keep three sig figs because we have three sig figs in the given amount. And so it's 0 0.0908 Mars of copper because uh, you keep the nine, the zero, and the eight. What comes after the eight is a three, so you keep the eight, uh, an eight. Yeah, to come back to how to use the calculator properly, if you uh, use the scientific notation, then you don't need uh, parentheses around 6.022, 10 to the 23rd, because the calculator knows when you are using the E, the capital E, the E, E key, that it it will keep the times 10 to the 23rd with the 6.022. It will keep that all together as one number. And we'll, there's no uh, risk of, uh, you know, having the number split in two and having the exponential part move up in the numerator. So 
So that's why I strongly recommend to use the uh, EE key of your calculator.